Hey class, for this demo, we are going to create a scene like this, and it's just an experiment using an HDR light in your Sky Dome light, and then how to apply custom textures and materials to your spheres. So we'll use the presets from Arnold of Chrome, Glass, and Car Paint, and then we'll actually go out and find a couple custom materials and apply them to the other two spheres. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is create a ground plane and scale it up. You can scale it up in the channel box layer editor and then circularize it. So that's edit mesh and circularize and then press the number three to smooth preview this particular object. And this will make us have that infinite looking ground plane. Next, we're gonna add the spheres. So I'm just scaling them up to a decent size five. And then if I translate it, five as well that will put it kind of straight on the ground plane and i'm just going to move this out of the way and move the pivot point so i'm going to activate um, point snap press d and move the pivot point down to the bottom i need to turn off point snap and then i'm just going to scale these i think having um a few spheres giving them some preset materials and then using the um, the special materials that we're going to download will give it a fun scene and it's super quick to do so just remember to duplicate your spheres just command d and then since we move that pivot point down to the bottom they're really easy to scale and keep more or less on the ground i feel like it's maybe hovering a tiny tiny bit so i'm just going to move them down just the slightest bit you can see they really were on the ground but just a tiny bit um, lower helps add realism. Going to add my Arnold area light. And then IPR the scene to see what it looks like. I'm gonna add the, change the resolution gate so I can see exactly what my camera will look like. And then once I'm happy with that, I'm going to create camera from view and call this my shot cam. I'm also gonna lock this shot cam so I know this will be my view. Finally, go back to perspective view to um, assign all my materials. So now um, every material will be an Arnold standard surface. The first one, let's make it chrome. The second one, right click, assign a new material. And this one, we're going to make this one, um, if you can right click, you can add this to your favorites. It maybe saves you a click. Um, next one, we're going to make this one, how about glass? That'll get some reflection. So one thing, I'm going to turn down my transmission. So that's whether it's 100% see-through or not. Right click, assign a new material for the next one. And this one I'm going to do car paint, which will be a really shiny um, number, like specular set at one um, kind of car paint. And really that's just for like brand new, never been touched cars. Not like any car I've ever had. Okay. Now we can double check what our scene looks like in IPR. You can see that the chrome has got 100% reflection. It's just like a mirror. The glass is pretty see-through. And now let's add our HDRI image. So that's high dynamic range. I'm going to recommend that you find your HDRI and special like download materials from either Ambient CG or HDRI Haven, which I'll show you next. Ambient CG is something that I've just found. I really like them because they have materials and HDRIs. They are um, public domain materials and they don't require an account to log in and download. So you just right click and download. So let's look at their HDRIs first. So these are um, 360 degree images. Ambient CG doesn't have a huge selection of HDRIs, um, but they have some really interesting sky only options, which are kind of cool and you could experiment with. 
Um, I'm going to pick, I think, one with a cool sky and a nice ground, um, which will be this one. It's got, it'll be really easy to see um, how it's affecting um, your spheres as well because there's like a definite sky and a definite ground. And you can see a preview of what this lighting setup will look like on different um, 3D models with different reflections. So it's kind of cool to be able to preview it as well. I'm going to select the 4K image, but you could easily use the 2K or 1K. Um, it won't make a huge difference as we're not going to be showing it if we're just using it for lighting. So once it opens, right click and select Save Image As. And now this is really important. You want to save it into your project folder. So I'm going to go to my 2021 intro to 3D. And then I had set my project to project to environment, project to environment. And you want to save to your source images folder so that it will be there um, and easily accessible. Back in Maya, we're going to select our sky down light and go to the attribute editor. And under color, you can select any color you like or um, select this little option box where we can link our file. So let's click on that option box, go to file, and that will open up some image op options. So let's select image name, select the folder next to image name, and because I had set my project earlier under source images, um, our 4K image is here. So I'm just gonna open that. And you can see instantly that it is showing up in the background of my scene. Now remember, it's not always a good idea to mix um, super realistic things like this picture with a regular um, kind of stylized scene. So, we don't actually want this picture to show. What we want is for us to be able to use the kind of lighting that's been generated by it and the reflections that have been generated by it. Now you can see there's some really cool reflections that are going on in this car paint and also in the glass and in the chrome. And you'll see because of the way the glass material is, it acts as like a mirror or reflection, so your scene is upside down, whereas the chrome acts as a, a straight mirror to the outside world. Now, so we don't want to see this actual sky, but we do want to have the lighting from the sky. So the way we do that is we select our sky dome light again to get back to our main menu. And then underneath our SkyDome light attributes, there's a few different options. One, you could change your exposure here. So it could be a brighter or lighter scene. I generally leave it at one, but if your scene is pretty dark. Um, next, you can increase the number of samples. So that's a rendering um, noise issue. And so you can increase those here. You can also determine whether this particular light is casting shadows in your scene or not. So we're gonna keep that on. And then under visibility, this is this tiny little tab here. We're gonna to click to open that. And what we're going to do is select our camera, whether it's visible to the camera or not. And we're gonna change this to zero. So all the way to the left. And now if we render again, you can see that I'm getting none of the visibility of this sky dome, but I'm getting all of the cool camera um, or all of the cool reflections from the scene in here. And it's really kind of nice, um, maybe a bit unrealistic for this chrome and for the glass, but um, I'm just gonna keep going with it. I like it. Going back to this ambientcg.com, I'm gonna go to the materials options, and you can see there's a ton of pre-made materials the majority of these were made in Substance Painter or Substance Designer. And um, just a whole lot of cool options for you to pick from. Um, again, I always kind of keep in mind that choosing a highly realistic, highly detailed um, material may not work with my particular scene. Um, 
So definitely kind of keep that in mind when you're making your selection. But I do, for the demo purposes, want to select something that's got some texture and some um, uh, depth to it. So let's select, I really, okay, I really like this one, this fabric pattern. And I'm just gonna download maybe the 4K version. And you can see when you hover over the folder that you're getting um, a lot more than just one particular flat asset. You're getting like ambient occlusion, you're getting your displacement maps, your normal maps, your roughness maps, etc. So let's download this. And I'm also gonna grab one more. Um, I want one with texture. I think I'm gonna go with this one here. Painted plaster, you can see there's got a lot of like kind of 3D displacement elements to it and I'll download this one too. Now when these are downloaded, I'm going to immediately unzip them and then move them to my source images folder. and drag them into the project too. And then I'm going to make sure they're in my source images. Next, we're going to start plugging in all of those different um, images that we downloaded for a particular texture into the right channel. And this chart has been a lifesaver for me and it just shows where what the actual file is, so the color, the roughness, the metallic, etc. And then what color space options you need to choose. And then finally, where it needs to be um, plugged into in the AI standard surface material. All right, so back in Maya, I'm going to use um, the sphere. So right click, assign a new material. You can also choose assign a favorite material. If you did select that AI standard surface, it may be in here. I'm just gonna do assign a new material, Arnold AI standard surface. And for our first option, we want to plug in um, under base, we want to plug in the color map. So click the option box next to color and we'll go to file and click on our file folder. Now let's do that fabric one. And you can see we've got ambient occlusion, displacement roughness, two different types of normal maps, and then our last option is the underscore color. So I'm gonna select that for my color, which makes sense. And make sure that my textured view is selected. That's this little option, or you can, I believe, press six. So a couple other things from that chart, we want our color space to be sRGB. All right, so now let's plug in our next attribute. So I'm gonna select my um, sphere again, go to my AI standard surface, and let's select our next option. So I'm just gonna go back to my little chart here so let's just go down the list. Um, roughness is going to be color space raw plus alpha is luminance. And it will go into our specular roughness option channel. So let's go here, oops. So specular, right now this is set for the weight. So how much specular to one, and we're just gonna crank that way down. And then for roughness, we're instead of using a 0.2 flat value, we're gonna use a picture. So we'll click on the option box, click on file, and under file attributes, click on the box, go back to my fabric, and select the roughness map. There we go, and hit open. Now remember it said color space, 
it wanted raw. And then for the luminance, I believe that is under color balance. Aha, it's under color balance. Alpha is luminance. So those are the two extra things that you need to check. So change your color space, change your um, alpha color balance, alpha is luminance. Okay, next let's go back to our little, we've got metallic. I don't think this has any metallic in it. Um, so for normal, we could use the bump 2D and normal camera. However, let's keep using that um, the normal map that we have been doing. So let's apply that by selecting our object again, going to Hypershade, selecting our AI standard surface, the one that we've been working on. Nope, it's this one, AI standard surface four, and I'm just gonna rename this um, plaid. And we could be plugging in all these values here too. So this is probably an easier way. Um, for my plan, I'm going to show all of my input and output connections in my nodes. And then I'm going to add a normal map. So AI normal map, click on it. We are taking the out value and plugging it into our normal camera. And then we are selecting for our input, the option box, file, image name, and our fabric. And then I have found that for our normals, that normal GL has worked for me in the past with other materials from this site. The difference between normal GL and normal DX is that one of them has the green value inverted. So you can select either or if one looks weird, then select the other. Hit OK. So for my color space, we are going to change this again to raw. And then color balance. Alpha is luminance. And you can see what's happening here that we're already getting that nice texture. We can zoom in, get a little more of a look. All right, and then for this particular texture, that is it as far as images. Um, we don't need to use the displacement because we use the normal map. And ambient occlusion just adds kind of artificial shadows that you would have um, in a video game, but we're using like real-time lighting, so we don't need that. So now if we look at our scene, you can see we're getting a pretty great um, texture and it's showing up really nicely in the IPR. Now, I wanna do one more, so hang with me here. And I'll speed this up a bit. So assign a new material, or you can see that assign a favorite material is here. I'm gonna go straight into Hypershade this time. And you can see that my nodes from last time were still active. So I'm just gonna assign the color. And then if you click that little button there, it will clear all of those nodes from your view so you won't get mixed up. I'm going to assign the color to the base color. I don't need to change the color space and I can just go back to my paint peel material. So color is set. We need to change the specular so it's not so shiny. Under roughness, let's select the option box and add a file and select the image name and select the roughness map. Hit open. Now you'll notice I forgot to change the color space and the alpha is luminance. Um, but I did go back to my main screen here and select that input and output connections. And then if you need to clear this workspace area again, that's the button. 
And I went ahead and added the normal map, so AI normal map. And then you need to connect the out value to the normal camera, so click and drag. And then where there's input, you're gonna select file. And from here, you're gonna select um, your normal GL. So remember, there's a difference between normal GL and DX, and I believe in Maya, GL is closer. But if there is a problem, just select the other one. And once that's in, I do change it to the color space raw, and you can see here, alpha is luminance. So now I remembered that I forgot to do that for the roughness map, so I just clicked on the roughness node change that to raw and clicked alpha is luminance. So you can select these different nodes and um, then edit their options on the right. You can see my shader ball is not updating for some reason, but it did update over in my main view. It's not really showing the color, but once I select IPR, you'll see that I am getting the full kind of picture. So the last thing is just to assemble your scene and just make a render of this. Um, you could also do a screenshot of it. I just wanna see that you have created a scene like this and used two different materials. And again, remember these materials could be from anywhere. Substance Source has a bunch of free materials as well. So just experiment and kind of have fun with this exercise. All right, thank you.